Hi there. Today we're here with Deacon Karen from the Ardmore Food Pantry. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're good. So the Giving Tree has been able to help out the Ardmore Food Pantry for some time now with various gifts. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if we could just get, get an opportunity to tell everyone about your food pantry and what you do. Can you tell us about your organization? I certainly can. Um, the organization has been functioning as a full food pantry, I would say since 2012. We've expanded over that time. I'm very happy to say that this past Monday, we went back to serving our guests inside with a lot of new precautions in place to keep everybody safe. Um, but we provide people with um, a good selection of non-perishable foods, which means the stuff that you usually see in cans or in boxes in the, um, on the shelves of your pantries at home. We also provide them with sources of protein, sources of protein like uh, sometimes chicken hot dogs, turkey bacon, ground beef, uh, fish, um, eggs and cheese. And we have a great assortment, especially coming up more in, in the spring and summer of fresh produce that's provided to us by Trader Joe's and a number of organizations in the Lower Marion Township area, like the um, uh, the the YMs. I think it's the YMCA has a uh, a raised bed, and they raise food and they bring that to us. Uh, what, several of the churches bring us uh, uh, produce as well. So the stuff that we get, offer to our guests comes from the whole entire community. It's like I said, Trader Joe's organizations and also people who donate food um, on a daily basis and leaving it uh, in our drop off place so that we, ha we uh, have enough food for our guests on Mondays. That's awesome. It's great to hear how a lot of different businesses in the community come together. That's yeah. awesome. What are some of the different reasons that you find people might come to a food pantry? Well, the biggest reason is because they need food. Uh, they may not have enough money. Most, many of our guests are elderly, so they might be trying to live on social security and that can be very limiting. So what they, this gives them the opportunity to direct dollars they may have been spending on food before towards utilities or rent or medical care or whatever. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is uh, they like us. They like coming to the food pantry especially when we, we when we serve them inside because that gives them a real opportunity to but we haven't gotten this part back in place yet but we they used to come in a little bit early sit around the tables we'd offer them coffee and snacks and they'd chat with their friends and it would be a really nice warm gathering of local residents who are uh, coming to us for food but also coming to us so that they can spend time with their friends Many of our volunteers, as well as myself, uh, become friends with our guests as well, and have been trying to keep up with them during the past two years of pandemic. But I've been able to do that because I was the one outside going from, from car to car, greeting the guests as they drove up. So uh, but now we have more of an opportunity to sit and chat with them while they're waiting to go into the food, the, the, um, the uh, food pantry. Well, that's great. It sounds like that also helps so much with the loneliness that some people feel. And it's just got to be a great social thing for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, with rising costs that you hear about on the news and going on in the community, I'm sure you might be seeing more families uh, coming in. You know, it, it, it kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, even during the pandemic, during the first couple of months of the pandemic, we probably saw the largest number of people probably reaching up to 100, maybe more. Then it kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say bottomed out, but it kind of evened out where we're back to about 80 to 85 um, uh, every Monday. And that's where we are now. Most of the time, the number of people who come to our food pantry are influenced by the weather. And if they know we're giving out gift cards that day. So um, we usually at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we will give out gift cards. $25 gift cards. And that is a great incentive for people to come and be with us. And at those times, we can have as many as 125 people coming. Oh, wow. Can you share an interesting story about anyone that you might have met, a special friend? I know you said you've all gotten to be friends. Mm -hmm. Right. I would say 
that some of our guests are also volunteers. They've been coming to the food pantry and they wanted, they wanted to give back. They wanted to show their thanks. So we have several people, although again, we're kind of limited right now because we're trying to keep things safe and get before we you know, open, up, open it up to everybody being in the, in the room at the same time. But um, it's, that's been great because it's also a way for us to get feedback. So sometimes a, a guest will be more apt to talk with another guest about, uh, especially if it's something they feel as though needs improvement, and then that person would come and, and let me know. Uh, we get, we do surveys every once in a while to try to get a sense of what we're providing that isn't working and what we're not providing that they need. So every once in a while, we make adjustments to what we have available to them. Um, I would say a, another, another thing that is an outgrowth of that is that some of our guests have, uh, have connected us with other organizations in Lower Marion Township that we have uh, created alliances with and being able to serve more people or serving more people in different ways. Like they might, it's an organization a couple of blocks away that um, uh, offers clothing and other kinds of things. We don't do that, we do the food. So we wanna make sure that we're connecting and that people know where they can go to get the resources that they need. That's great. That's great. And it's great to hear that sometimes people come and then want to volunteer because that's a really big lesson that we're teaching the students that we work with is, you know, there, there's always something that we can do to help. There's always something everyone can do to help. And even the people that are coming in and might be struggling a little bit with poverty can see and recognize a need to help someone else. And that's really what we're trying to create is a real pay it forward environment for these kids. So that's awesome. Um, so as far as the gifts that the Giving Tree has been able to provide you, I know we've given you some sock rolls and some food bags. Can you just share with the students, how, how does that make the guests feel when they receive a special gift like that and a special handmade card? It makes them feel really good. Number one, they know that it's been, those bags have been created by younger people. So they, they love that idea. They love the fact that they took the time to select the items that they put in those bags and the time to create those cards. It just makes them feel as special as the kids probably feel putting those bags together. That's how special our guests feel when they get one, uh, one of those in their bags. And it has been a number of years now that we've been working with, with you and providing those. So they're always, oh, it's, it's bag day, it's bag day. So it's, <laughs> it's you know, always well, something great. they look forward to. Well, that's great. Well, awesome. I'm so glad that we had this chance to sit together and learn a little bit about your organization and all that you do in the community. Um, kudos to you for everything that you're working on and helping all the people. And um, we'll be happy to share this little interview and help the kids learn even more about giving back. That'd be great. Okay. Well, I'm just going to um, say thank you then. And I'm going to stop our recording. <laughs>